morning. This is Tri-City Community Television covering Nick's car show. We see that you are the owner of a nice little Ford pickup. Would Thank you like you. to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, well, I got it probably about eight years ago. I bought it off a friend of mine, and he'd bought it from a, a couple over in uh, Gibsons, BC, here up the coast. And uh, something I always wanted, but, you know, could never really afford it and, or had the time when I was working. So, you know, I got this one off a uh, buddy of mine. It needed a lot of things, but, you know, every winter I take it off the road and do odds and ends to it, add and subtract, and um, something I love to do. You know, it's just a backyard mechanic kind of thing, but... So how long you know, did it take you to build this? Uh, well, most of it was done, but it needed a lot of work. It needed it need to be redone. Right. And uh, so I, uh, I did most of... Like the rear end, uh, I had done by a place in uh, New West, and uh, all the front end was out of a 1979 Dodge Cordova. I just had that done by a suspension shop out in Langley. Um, so basically, there's not too much stock on it, except the rear end, the rear end is, the cab is, hood, benders kind of thing, but the drivetrain's not. Right. Yeah. And what do you have in there for a powertrain? It's a 460. Uh, with this Mercury? No, it's Ford 460 out of a, it was out of, out of a, I believe it was a 79 uh, Lincoln Continental. That and the transmission, which is a C6. Right. Yeah. So it's been fun. You know, I uh, live and breathe it. And, uh, you know, whenever I get a chance to get it out, it's out the road. And now with retirement here, I can do those things, right? Yeah, Before exactly. I couldn't, so. <laughs> But yeah. I find most people in retirement don't have time to do well, anything. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I had to keep my head uh, into the nose of the grindstone kind of thing to you know get get an area where I could afford to even get one of these and so yeah I know it's uh it's been a lot of fun yeah well, I really enjoy it for sure well thank you and yeah being a Ford man I really appreciate well, it well thank you very much <laughs> anyway and you are I'm Ted Davies Ted Davies yeah thank you Ted well thank you yeah I appreciate it thank you Good morning. Good morning. We're Tri City Community Television covering this car show. We love your international. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Who you are and what effort you went through to get to this stage? Well, I've looked for this year of model for years and years before I found this one. And uh, I found it uh, at a swap meet in uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, it wasn't quite looking the same as it does now. No. But that was a long time ago, and uh, then over the years we redid it and got it back into original shape. And uh, everything's original; it's not hot rotted or anything. Did you do all the work on it yourself, or did you drop uh, some of it out? No, no, I did. We did all the work except for the bodywork and paint. Cool. Uh, but we've pretty well rebuilt the whole thing, the whole chassis. Very nice job, beautiful vehicle. What and year is it? 1936. It's a 36 yeah. international. No, yeah. It's all and the you are? And I'm Jim Hammer. Jim Hammer. Uh, yeah. I'm using hammers back east. I don't know if you're no, right. no, it's from Mission. Ah, Whole and family. And you're living? I live in Port Coquitlam now. Yeah. And you're in Port Coquitlam. Yeah. Well, that is great. Yeah. It's great for you to uh, give us a little uh, insight into what it takes to put together one of these things. Well, time, effort, and, and a lot of searching. Labor of love, that's what they say. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Good afternoon, you have such a beautiful car here. Would you like to tell us who you are? Uh, I'm Rick Marchand from Coquitlam. Thank you, Rick. And would you like to tell us a little bit about the creation of this and how you acquired it? 
Okay, it was uh, completed in 2008. It was a five-year build. It was uh, built in Ladner. Uh, Russ Genvy built it. He's a uh, interior fellow by trade. And uh, after five years, he had it left. He had it for about a year, and then he put it up for sale, and my buddy bought it. So George had it for about 11 or 12 years, took it out sparingly. He was afraid to get rock chips on it or drive it, so it's got very low kilometers on it. It's got uh, 11,000 kilometers on it now. When George bought it, there was about 5,500 kilometers on it, so it's not very... No, but I'm putting more on it than what George is. I, I drive my cars. I've got this one here and I've got the truck beside me here. And uh, uh, so anyway, George uh, decided to part with it. Uh, I've been uh, doing his advertising for him when he was been selling of some of his other cars. Uh, and as I was writing the ad and push publish, I said, gee, I would sure like to buy this car off you, George, because quality like this doesn't come around too often. So uh, anyway, we talked about it, we made a deal, and uh, I've got this now, and I'm selling my truck. So... Uh, <laughs> Obviously, you're not a millionaire. Well, no, and they're, they're, neither of them are daily drivers, so you can only... I had a challenge, I had to get my wife up early to come down here to help me out to get them down here. You said when you gave her up, you gave her up for the car. No, 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 she, 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 no. She's into horses, so she's got two horsepower. I got a little bit more. So. And what do you got for the drivetrain? Uh, this is a 95 Camaro 350 LT1, fuel injected. Uh, and uh, it's a 700R uh, automatic transmission with a C4 Corvette rear end. So it looks just as pretty underneath as it does on top. I didn't, I don't have any mirrors here or anything. I just had this actually, I just brought it back last night. It was down at uh, Linden Fair. I was asked to bring it down there. So it was on display down there and I won People's Choice Award down there and best in class. Great. So wow. we raced Thank back you. here and polished her up and got up at five in the morning to come here to do it all again. Show us, all us, show us Coco, us what it's like to be a There we go. Yeah. I can, car collector. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, yeah, I come here every year. It's uh, Great, it was nice talking to you. Yeah, you bet, yeah. anytime. Have a great day. Good afternoon, you have such a beautiful Cuda here. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's 1965 Barracuda, and the uh, all the running gear is brand new. The 426 Hemi engine, got a Tremec five-speed rear or, uh, transmission, and a uh, Dana 60 rear end. Well, that should certainly uh, stand up on the track. Yeah, it's built. It's built as a pro street, so uh, yeah, it can be used on the track if need be. Cool. Yeah. And how long did it take you to build this car? Two years. Two years. That's, yeah. That's not bad considering what I see here. Well, I uh, I started building it after I retired, and that was my full-time job for two years. <laughs> so, much, so much for retirement, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the paint job. I've been impressed with it <clears throat> every year I've seen it. I wanted to do that on my own car, but I didn't have time. Anyway, who did this job? And That's thanks to Curtis Ham, who lives on 240th and Maple Ridge. And he's got a, a business there um, called Curtis Ham's Artwork well, he does and a, Custom Artwork. He does a great job. Yeah, he does that. And you are? Les Woodward. Les Woodward. Les, it's been a pleasure talking with you and admiring your car. Thank you very much. You have a great day. Yeah, same with you. Bruce Richardson. Bruce, 
Tell me what uh, brings you to the show besides this lovely. Uh, I'm a, um, I'm I'm one of the directors of the sh of the show. I've been uh, involved with it for 15 years. It's a 39 Chev. I bought it uh, the uh, the uh, what do you want to call it? The skeleton in 2003. It took me 12 years to get it together to uh, a point where I could drive it down the road, and um, and so now I'm uh, so it's been on the road for a few years, and. Um, it has a 350 Chev engine, 700 R transmission, 373 Posi rear end, uh, Nova suspension, and uh, what else do we have? Seats out of an Acura, and very little, uh, very little original 39 Chev other than the body. So this must have been a labor of love if you spent 12 years at it. Absolutely, and uh, and. Uh, Those marriages don't last that long. <laughs> And uh, and you never want to add up what you spend on it. Just uh, never mind in time. Not no, time, forget the time, but the money you put into it, you don't want to add that up either. No, for sure. Well, thank you very much for the information and uh, showing us this beautiful little car. Thank you. How are you? Good. And uh, is this your lovely uh, Ford F-150? Yeah. It is. And tell me, did you do a lot of the work on this yourself? No, I haven't done any on it. You just bought it as it no, is? No, I bought it and had friends do a bunch of work for me. Oh, well, that's good to have friends. Yeah, home. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It works out well. Huh? It does, otherwise yeah. it would cost you a fortune to get it to this stage. Oh, yeah. 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 What year is it? 54. 54? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't look like an original Ford engine. No. It's like a Chevy. Well, it is a Ford engine. Yeah, the 351. Oh, now being a sport man, you'd think I would know that. <laughs> and how long did it take you to get, uh, get it to this stage? Well, I bought it partly done. Oh. I had no power train in it. The bodywork and paint was done, and the interior was done. So I had it for three years. Oh. But I just put it on the road about four months ago, so. Beautiful. It takes a while to get stuff done. Well, thank you very kindly for the information on this little beauty. No problem. You have a great day. You too. Mike Saylor. Mike, you have a beautiful car here. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's a 1972 Grand Torino Sport that I acquired back in uh, maybe 1991. And fortunately, I gave it to my father at that time to uh, move out west to pursue a career in rebar. Oh, yeah. And he spent 25 years restoring the car part time to uh, bring it to this condition. Well, that's, a, that's obviously a work of love. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, being first born has its benefits. Yeah, doesn't it? Yes. And I understand you're from Ontario. Yes, yes, I'm from uh, Niagara Falls area. Well, to find a car in this kind of shape in Ontario at any year is a rarity. Yes, it is. <laughs> Anything special about it other than uh, you inherited it and you bought it for your father? Well, it, it's been uh, well, well restored for the last 25 years and uh, everything's been rebuilt on it. Cool. And it's a good driver and uh, economic on gas being the two barrel 351 Cleveland motor. Yes, so it's got the power so it doesn't need to burn as much gas to get you going where you want to go. That's right. Well, anyway, thank you. I guess it's been a pleasure uh, talking with you and seeing this car. Being a Ford man, I appreciate Fords. Thank you, thank Have you very much. Day. Jack Barilek. Jack, it's a pleasure meeting you and standing beside a car that's probably as old as my great grandfather. She had her 107th birthday a few weeks ago. Wow. Then we have here a 1915 Model T Speedster. And 
It's the uh, original uh, hot rod uh, yeah. from the era. Exactly. Yeah. Back then they used them as uh, board track racers as well. Exactly. This car draws a lot of attention. It does. And you said you've had it for? Five years. Five years and who did all the work on it? A, a bunch of people. Uh, and so consequently each owner that's had it in the for the last say 35 or so years we've all done something a little extra a little extra a little extra so uh, i don't know who actually put the car together uh, 40 years ago from a standard model t roadster uh, to make it yeah so so it's a bit of a hybrid the wheels are not stock the uh, seats are not stock the way they came from ford or that gas tank uh, but the rest of the car is all just pure Model T. Cool. And uh, so each of us have done different things. And the car was basically like this when I got it. Uh, but uh, what I did was all the mechanicals. So the, it wasn't quite running right. It was making funny noises when I got it. It wasn't shift. Well, yeah, and it, and it had a terrible shimmy where, you know, the whole car would shake because the front... Uh, suspension and and steering wasn't right and so we well, good car. It was great talking with you thank you for the information oh you're welcome lots of luck with it in your next car show yeah yeah i know it's it and it likes to be driven so it yeah. it drove here today from quite a long distance You're richmond bc which is about 50 kilometers from here yeah that's probably yeah. Long distance. yeah 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 oh great you have a great day sir. okay you take care Good afternoon, sir, and you are? I'm Colin Chu. Colin? Yes. Tell us a little bit about this. Uh, I'm not sure what to call it. Hey, it's a uh, 1967 Mustang. I started that way. <laughs> I've owned this, owned this car since I was 16. Oh, and cool. uh, yeah, it's been in the family a long, long time. So started uh, originally looking to do an Eleanor style of car, and then, uh, but I always loved the uh, 80s dirt racers from California with the big openings, the flares, uh, and then uh, the Hoonicorn came out, Mustang Kyle, and so started to, to go down that road with a friend of mine at Plan B Hot Rods, did all the interior uh, metal work and all the fabrication work, running on an Art Morris chassis, airbag chassis, so it can nice, sit nice down low and, and drive really well. So just got it last September, we've been just modifying it here and there, making little tweaks, driving the crap out of it, making sure it's driving properly and, and running hard. So it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of love. I was going to say, it sounds like a labor of love, especially when you look at the car next to Oh yeah, Stefan's finished beauty over there. Yeah. And that's what this is going to look like when you're finished. One day, one day I hope to be at that level, <laughs> yes. <laughs> How many days do you figure that's going to be? I, I, a lot of hair left from there, right? Yeah. If you, few decades later I'll be there. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, so, definitely a labor. Most marriages don't last that long. Yeah, luckily, but this is my stress reliever, right? So the <laughs> wife, wife is happy when you're working on a car and That's not being stressed. Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well, thank you very much. It's yeah. been a pleasure talking with you and learning about custom cars. Well, thank you. I'm Jimmy Barnes. Jimmy, you have an interesting looking vehicle here. We do. It's based on a 1923 Model T, but it's a full custom build from the, from the ground up. The headlight cans, those are original 1914s. Those are original off 1914. Everything else is completely custom. Very interesting automobile. Mm -hmm. And I imagine this was a labor of love. It was. Actually, there's a story behind it. My, my father built this car originally in 1970. Oh, cool. And he drove it daily. and. Uh, you know, he would take me out in it every so often, and he since let it go, and it changed hands, and it changed ownership, it changed paint jobs, and everything. And uh, after he passed, I was looking to try to find a way to get it back again because I have an affinity with this car. Um, obviously, you were successful. Yeah, and it took a couple of attempts, and finally, a, lot of money probably. a fair bit of money. <laughs> But finally we got it back in the family and now it's here to stay and never to be sold again. So well, that is cool. That yeah. is an interesting story. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much for the information and the history. Yeah, thank you. And your story. <laughs> Appreciate it, thanks.
the winner is a 1933 Chev Coupe, Rick Marchand. The next award is a 1950 to 1959 modified car or truck. It's sponsored by North Star Development, and the winner is a 56 Mercury M100 pickup, Frank Borey. The next award is 60 to 69 modified car or truck, sponsored by Meyer Frere's Chartered Accountants. And the winner is a 1967 Chevelle, Dean Kotoposki. Kotoposki. The next one is a 70 to 79 modified car truck sponsored by Brian Wormold, photographer extraordinaire. And the winner is a 1972 Datsun 510, Ralph Disterhoff. Next is a 1980 to 89 modified car truck sponsored by Meyer Frayer's Frears, chartered accountants. Frere, Frears, Meyer Frears. You, they, they know what I mean. Uh, it's a 1986 Buick Regal T-Type Kelly Jasper. Next is the 1990 to 2022 modified car or truck sponsored by North Star Development. And the winner is a 1990 GMC Sidestep, Rick Marchand. How many hats can you wear? Next is the uh, best stock car truck, zero to 1959. And the winner is a 1932 Model B pickup, Ken Lurick. Next is the 60 to 65 best stock car or truck sponsored by North Star Development. It's a 1962 Chevy Impala hardtop four door, Justin White. Next is a 1966 to 68 best stock car or truck sponsored by Mike Forrest. And the winner is a 1968 Firebird convertible, Don Allen. Next is the six, 69 to 72 best stock car or truck sponsored by S&M Distributing. And the winner is a 1970 AAR Cuda, Ron Busniski. Or some other pronunciation. Next is the 73 to 87 best stock car or truck sponsored by Norlang Auto Repair. And the winner is a 1974 260Z Datsun, Brian Peters. Next is a 1988 to 2022 Best Stock Car or Truck, sponsored by Barry Hamill. And the winner is a 2002 Firehawk, Gordon Milton. Next up is the Steve Roberts Memorial Best Import, sponsored by Grip Tire. And the winner is a 1973 Datsun 240Z, Dylan Brinkworth. Well, that's, you know. Next is the Best GM, sponsored by Inner City Appraisals. And the winner is a 1965 Corvette, Norm Lewis. Next is the Best Ford, sponsored by Fraser River Paint and Body. And the winner is a 1965 Mustang, Stefan Amirali. Next we have the Best Stock Truck, sponsored by Sam's Pub. 
And the winner is a 1957 Chev pickup, A. McGill. Next is Best Interior, sponsored by Sam's Pub. And the winner is a 1964 Chevelle, Aaron Smith. The next one is the Best Engine, sponsored by Poco Event Society. And the winner is a 1970 Hemi Cuda, Les Mergulli. Next is the Best Paint Job, sponsored by r &L Automotive. The winner is a 1971 El Camino, Kathy G. And next is the uh, MLA's Choice, sponsored by Mike Farnworth, MLA. And the winner is a 1950 Willys, Ken Hunt. Next is City's Choice, sponsored by Edge Safe Systems. The winner is a 1959 Chevy Apache, Chris Rivera. Next is the Long Distance, sponsored by Greenlight Innovation Partners. And the winner is a 1985 AMC Jeep Cherokee, Kyle Lambert from Saskatoon. Next one is a participant's choice, sponsored by Astoria Retirement Residence. And the winner is a 1953 Packard Mayfair convertible. All right, my name is Dean Washington. I am the volunteer chairperson of this fine car show that's uh, 16 years in the making. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Oh, well, I don't know, that's not what my, my wife says, but. <laughs> All the participants, the spectators, how about the cruise last night brought to you by Dominion Lending? That was awesome. And I really appreciate everyone adhering to our no burnout policy. Assholes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I saw the video. Yeah. I'm also a city councillor, so we got to pay to fix that shit up too, man. So, anyway, before I get into thanking a, uh, a few of our sponsors and volunteers, uh, I'd like to present uh, the best Mopar award. Um, we didn't have it, it's the best Mopar, but it, it is now, we're renaming it the best Mopar uh, Ken Parker award. And just briefly, Ken Parker was one of the first volunteers that brought this show to you. Uh, he, he was on the committee for over a decade. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Ken uh, recently. Um, he, was, he was a real driver to get this thing going. He was a man of, of few words, but when he spoke, you listened. Because what he had to say meant something. I had... He was a, just a great guy. I spent a lot of nights in various bars after our meetings uh, discussing, you know, this very fine show. So I just want to raise a glass to Ken. We love you. We'll see you down the road. So the winner of the, the inaugural Ken Parker uh, Best Mopar Award is car number 267, 
1967, uh, oh, I can't read this writing. Ravadir GTX, David Chan. From Richmond, British Columbia, right? Yeah. Okay, before we do the best of show, I'd just like again to thank our sponsors, uh, Metro Ford, who's been here from day one. They do so much for this show, providing cars, staffing, money. <laughs> so I really appreciate them, and let's give them a big round of applause. Go buy your Ford from Metro Ford. The Magnus or Magnuson Ford in Abbotsford, two friendly dealerships. The Downtown Poco Business Improvement Association is our other major sponsor. They're the, the, the retailers in this area that supported this show from day one. They've, they've been the ma you know, major uh, uh, part of our success. So please go visit the stores. That's why we don't have a lot of food vendors here because we want you to go and, and patronize their stores. So let's give a big round of applause for them. There's many, many, many other sponsors, but uh, they're on your t-shirt. Um, but one I'd like to really bring up is, is Brothers Brewing. Randy and Brad Doncaster from the Cat and Fiddle, they stepped up, and I'll tell you, they gave us a sponsorship for this beer gardens to have their signage, and they donated every ounce of beer and alcohol here today to make this show even more successful. So thank you very much, boys. Much, much appreciated. And of course, I couldn't... Uh, this is a, a year-round event. Uh, I'm going to get... I'm going to miss people because they're not all here this year. But uh, everyone wearing a shirt like this, say thank you to them because... They put a hell of a lot of work into these two days to make it the best possible experience for you guys. So thank you to all the volunteers. Not to mention the people that come out for the day of the event, selling booze, doing the traffic, parking, staging, registration. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so... Let's get to the best of show. I will tell you, I can't remember what year it was, but I believe, I can't remember, it was maybe 10, 15, 10 years ago, this fellow built a car and brought it to our show and blew everyone away and took away the top prize. And here we are 10 years later. Is it 10 years? 11 years later, thank you, and he blew us away again. So the winner of the best of show of the 2022 Downtown Pork Coquitlam Car Show sponsored by Metro Ford is unfortunately a Chevy. Not kidding. <laughs> car number 361, the 1962 Chevy Convertible of Rick Leganis.